Hello, this is Nick. I am going to attempt to make some mochi wrappers for a pumpkin ice cream custard. Um, so this is going to be pretty interesting. I've never made this before and I can't really tell how to use the ingredients because they're all very new to me. Um, so we'll just see how this goes. I'm um, going over the ingredients that I'll be using. Um, first, we have the shiratmako, which is uh, a sweet uh, rice flour that's very, very, um, it's made a special way so that it reacts differently with water. It's one of the many types of Japanese uh, rice flours. Um, this is what it looks like. It was a bit of a hassle to find because, see that? Yeah, that means as much to you as it does to me. Um, so this is what I want. After quite a bit of searching, I found that. Um, like, coincidentally enough, you also need some of this. This is p potato starch. Um, also took me a little while to find. Um, interesting story. Uh, when I looked for this originally, some lady uh, at the grocery store uh, pointed it out to me after I asked for shiro tamako, um, and she pointed this out, but I could tell by feeling it that the grains are really wide, and I was like, what the heck, none of the videos that I've been seeing about making mochi are like that, and this was right next to it, so I'm like, oh, this must be what I want. Um, so I actually already picked this up, so today when I went back to the grocery store and looked up how to say uh, potato starch in Japanese, they pointed to this, and I was like, hey, hell yeah, I already got that. Um, but then I realized I needed to actually buy this, so that's okay. Okay, you need these two, and this is basically all you need for making mochi. Um, you also need some sugar and some water. I have this fancy little kind of milky yogurt cup here. Um, sugar, and then I have some filling, which is pumpkin custard. Can't really see it. It's really hard right now, so I'm leaving it out to thaw a little bit. But it's pumpkin custard mixed with vanilla ice cream. Um, super sad thing about Japan, ice cream is pretty expensive, which is, for me is so depressing. Um, but anyway, we'll continue to cook. So, first thing you do is you open and mix um, the shiratamako with water until it becomes... Um, it doesn't stick to you, but also isn't too runny. Um, so I guess we'll see how this goes. Okay, so it looks like we're getting close or too far. Um, the water is really difficult. Hopefully I didn't wreck the recipe already. Um, I'll uh, try to get this to work. Okay, so it actually worked out perfectly. Um, I'm not sure if this is, like little bottle is pre-measured to go with exactly one package of the Shiramako, but it seems to work absolutely fine. It's not sticking to my hands. It's a nice doughy ball, and now you just kind of work it so that it's all even. Yeah. Work it. Well, you weren't looking, I added some sugar. Don't tell anybody. Okay, so now the recipes I've been reading say that you're supposed to like put it into little balls and then put it in boiling water, but that seems like a lot of work, and I just want to roll up the whole thing anyway. So I'm not going to put in little balls. I'm going to put in like four big balls or something like that. So uh, I made six nice plump balls here. Um, yeah. Uh, I wanted them to cook thoroughly, so I guess I just made six. As you can see, the ones on the edges are pretty large yet. So maybe I should have shrunk those, but we'll see how it turns out. Hey, so it's kind of the moment of truth here. I'm supposed to put the... Uh, balls in boiling water. It's not quite boiling, but there's like a few bubbles, so it's probably fine. And I don't know what's supposed to happen now. So we looked it up, and I'm supposed to uh, make sure that they're not really touching. That might be difficult. When they're done, they're gonna float. And, well, they're not quite done. When they're almost done, they're gonna float, and I want to take them out of the water one minute after they start floating. So I'm gonna fast forward to that. Damn it, why do these little buggers keep wanting to go together? Stop. Please. No matter what I do, they just float back together. That's okay, they don't seem to be sticking, so hopefully everything is gonna turn out fine. Okay, so while I've been waiting for those to boil, I uh, cut my custard ice cream into squares, which should make it a lot easier to wrap the mochi around. Um, also, I've been kind of nibbling on it because, oh my god, it's so delicious. But now it's melting too much, so I think I'm gonna put it back in the freezer now that I cut it. What I've seen people do is scoop out the ice cream, wrap it in a plastic wrap, then put it back in the freezer individually wrapped, which seems like a pretty good idea now that I'm running into this problem. Um, and then you just take that, put it in the mochi wrapper, and stick the whole thing back in the freezer. It's pretty great. 
Um, but, okay, I have to solve this problem. Also, I uh, sprinkled some of the potato starch here uh, on the breadboard, which you'll use for rolling out the mochi. And I uh, realized that I definitely don't have a rolling pin. Uh, this kitchen is not stocked to the amount. Well, no, it's, it's stocked very well, and I'm super thankful that I have everything. But a rolling pin would be nice. So instead, I'm going to use this beer bottle. It should be fine. Um, I didn't drink it, but it should be okay. Oh my god, is that a floater? It's a floater! Start the one minute timer. It should be done! Okay, so once the mochi is all floating and it's been floating on top for a minute, you take it out, drain out some of the water there, and you're supposed to dunk it in cold water. I'm not really sure why or what happens after that, so I should probably look that up in case this is supposed to be like a flash, flash dunk and then undo it. Whatever, we're just gonna go with it. That's the way I tend to do things. Because I'm just that kind of a guy. Well, the recipe said anything about uh, flash cooling or whatever. I don't even know what I'm talking about, but that's okay. So now I've got the little mochi ball. Um, maybe I'm supposed to wait till it's completely cool? It feels so soft. That's exciting. Okay. Well, they're still pretty warm on the inside. Um, maybe having colder water. My water's kind of a little less than lukewarm, what came out of the tap. Um, but they said ice water wasn't necessary. But you probably want this to be... This one's pretty cool. I'll, I'll take one of the smaller ones. Okay. So, I'm going to take this. Oh no, I don't want that wet. Crap. Why? What? Okay, if this is supposed to be... Dry? Is this supposed to be dry? Or is it supposed to be wet to like collect the powder? Ah, we're gonna try it. We're just gonna throw it on here and see what happens. Oh, oh god, okay. Huh. Smash that down a little bit. And roll it over and... Oh, that worked fine! What am I worrying? Oh god, it's stuck! It's stuck! Okay. That's fine. It's just absorbing it a little. It should be okay. So, I'll just spread out a little bit more. So now I'm gonna try rolling with the beer bottle. Hopefully that works fine. Um, okay. Sorry for the terrible camera work here. I'm obviously, obviously multitasking. Okay, so kind of mission accomplished. As you can see, I uh, cut out two circle circles after rolling out the mochi. Um, I just used a bowl. You can probably use a cookie cutter if you're more high tech than me. <clears throat> so now we're going to use these as wrappers and wrap up our pumpkin ice cream. Okay, so I think I got the camera positioned okay. So, uh, let's hope this works. I'm going to try to stab out some of this the pumpkin ice cream squares here. Um, great, okay, one can come out. So, it's kind of a block. I'm going to shape it into a circle by force. Um, just so that the corners don't, I don't know, don't question me. Okay, so now here's my little mochi square, circle, ice cream, and now we just wrap it. So we stretch it a little bit and let the extra, oh no, it broke, crap. I don't know what to, oh no, it's breaking. <laughs> okay, uh, it's breaking a little bit, but it should still be fine. Okay, so it's just, just, it looks kind of hideous, but you get the idea. You wrap it up, put it in there. I broke it. So I'm going to put that in some uh, handy saran wrap I've got nearby, wrap that shit up, um, freeze that, and then hopefully the saran wrap comes off super easily and it can be eaten later when it's not melted at all. Um, so I'm going to repeat this and hopefully it'll work better this time. Okay, so this time I'm using a much smaller wrapper. No. Same size wrapper. A uh, smaller wrapper would not do me any good whatsoever. But I'm using a much smaller piece of pumpkin ice cream. So hopefully this should fit better so that I don't have to pull the mochi apart any, um, which is what made it break last time. So I'm just going to put that in there, not worry about rounding it off, and just kind of fold in the corners. Um, there we go. And the mochi's actually got some sugar in it, so it's a little sweet um, on its own. So if you get bites that are more mochi and less ice cream, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's not going to be like randomly eating just a, just bread when you're eating a sandwich with a bread. Like if you get a bite that's just bread, it really sucks. Um, okay, 
So this is that. And I don't know how to get the edges to stick together. I'm just kind of pressing it, um, which I think is probably what just what you do. But this is way thicker than what it looked like in all the videos. But again, this is my first try, so come to some slack. Um, so hopefully this should... I can't imagine it tasting bad is the thing. It might look ugly, it might not work perfectly, but I can't imagine it not tasting good. So we're going to freeze these babies up, try them when they're completely frozen again, and uh, I'll uh, take a video of the result. Okay, so moment of truth, everybody. It's been a little over an hour, and I am taking the mochi out of the wrapper. Um, actually, this type of thing is normally called a uh, daifuku. Daifuku is normally made with a mochi wrapper in, and then anko inside. Anko is a Japanese kind of red bean paste that's really good. It's sweet. Um, it's one of the desserts they have. Um, again, it's really good. So this is what it looks like. Done. You can see this is, I think this was actually the first one I made, so it's got that little broken bit. Other than that, totally intact. It's sealed together pretty well, actually. Um, so it looks pretty good. Let's try it. I told you it wasn't gonna taste bad. <laughs> this is delicious. Um, the mochi is amazing. It's a great container for the custard. It's a good, I think, good for parties. Like, if I was gonna make this, look, they're all now like bite size. Well, not bite size, but like individual size pieces. So you put keep them all in here. You want one, you go into the freezer, take it out. It's clean because the cornstarch um, like protects your fingers from the stickiness. So yeah, once it's all the way frozen, because this isn't quite frozen back yet. Um, once it's all the way frozen, it's perfect. Um, so good. So I call that a success. Things to work on. Uh, maybe rolling it a little thinner. Okay, maybe getting a real rolling pin would help, but whatever. Um, also, just doing everything right might help. <laughs> I kind of just oh whatever a lot of it. Um, but it worked out super good. So um, I'll try the pistachio one. Oh, wait, you don't know about that yet. Um, mochi is delicious. Uh, if you want to try it at home, you'll probably have to use mochiko flour. M-I-C-H mochi I K O flour. Um, that's probably all you're gonna be able to find um, to do it. It comes in a box. It says mochiko in romaji or English, so that's great. Um, you'll be able to do it. Other than that, you can put what anything you in it that you want. Um, super good. So bon appetit. Uh, hope you enjoyed, and I'll get back to you if I have another culinary creation to begin. Bonus round! Okay, so I finished making all of the pumpkin mochi that I wanted to. And I'm sure if you guys were paying attention, you would have noticed that there's this weird kind of green stuff in the jar here. And you're like, Nick, what is that neon green crap powder you got sitting on your, uh, your table there? It doesn't look natural or like it's made by any human. Um, well, to tell you the truth, it is made by humans, internet. It is, in fact, instant pistachio pudding mix, Food Club 59 cent version. I brought this stuff all the way from the States, figuring it would make some good, uh, souvenirs or gifts. And I've discovered that just mixing the powder in with things makes it a million times more delicious. Have some ice cream? Mix in a little powder. Have some yogurt? Mix in a little powder. Have some hot chocolate? Mix in a little powder for that, uh, makes it creamier and gives it that, that, like, nutty little kick. Um, and I love pistachio, and the pistachio, instant pistachio pudding mix is kind of my crack. Um, and it sort of looks like it too. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, take one of these little mochi wrappers, and I'm gonna pour some of this powder on it. Kind of spread it around. Maybe, maybe a little bit more. You, know, you do want to be sparing though, because remember, like one of the one jar like this is supposed to make an entire like bowl, huge bowl, like mixing bowl of uh, pistachio pudding. So I'm going to put that there, and then I'm going to add some ice cream, and just uh, make vanilla ice cream in the middle, and have the wrapper be coated in the pistachio pudding. So there's that. Put that there. Okay, I'm not the most sanitary cook. So good though. Okay, put that down. Sorry. Um, and now we wrap it. I should probably wrap it so you can see it. Oh my God, this is gonna be so good. So 
I uh, start with the pumpkin custard because I kind of just ate the rest of the ice cream pumpkin custard because it was so good and I was just sitting there. Um, okay. So the wrapper is not quite big enough, but I have all these like spare dangly bits. So I'm just gonna kind of take this, wet down, wet it down one side and just layer it over the top like a nice gooey bandage. So you definitely need to saran wrap all this mochi shit because it is just, if it touches liquid, it dissolves completely. Um, it's not fun after that. So I'm gonna wrap this up. And look, I have enough for two. Stuck that in the freezer. Have a second mochi wrapper here and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I kind of made a mess, but it's fine. Another note, beer bottles work just fine as rolling pins. I don't know why we buy rolling pins. Because we're all suckers. Bonus round number two. So you remember all those scraps of mochi we had left? Um, so some people say you could just add some water, roll them in a bottle, and make more roach, mochi rolls. Well, I couldn't really do that. It didn't really work. Um, but mochi is really good, It's just normally. So I made some yogurt, added some honey. Mm, amazing. And now you can just eat it, I don't know, like in yogurt and cereal and stuff. People here with mochi, they eat mochi in a lot of different ways. Um, like people here eat mochi fried in soy sauce. It doesn't have to be sweet. Um, a lot of times if you add, you can add it in like a, a sushi, not sushi roll, but like sushi platter, sashimi platter. Um, I just like it, I like it sweet. Um, it was really good though when I like ate it fried, wrapped in some nori or seaweed, and uh, in some soy sauce. See that nice, delicious chunk of mochi. Mmm, so good. But thing to remember, it's basically just it's super condensed flour, like sweet rice flour. Um, is just it's super fine, which is how mochi sticks together and works. So keep in mind that like eating one of these or one of those mochi ice cream balls, like it's really filling. Don't eat too much. It's just like rice. If you eat too much of it, and it's easy to, you just feel terrible afterwards. Mochi is like a billion times worse. So it is a sweet or a little add-on. If you make it yourself, don't go crazy because your intestines will be screaming at you later. And so might anyone else who lives in your apartment or house um, for reasons.